Okay, the final thing we want to tell you is, you know, there's this whole notion of kind of pulling all the costs and doing it as schedules within our Revit, and that actually works out just fine. But if you really have an awful lot of data to aggregate together, it starts to get to be a lot of work to maintain all these schedules in here. These schedules are nice in that if I do go through and oh, make a change to the building, so for whatever reason, I decide to go through and move that wall on out. The nice part is the schedule just updated itself automatically. So it reflects the new value. That part's good. So it's good for some rough value feedback. But if I was going to try and do an entire construction estimate, this would actually get to be very cumbersome very quickly to try and maintain all these schedules. So that's going to take us to the final tool I want to look at quickly today, and that's called Autodesk QTO or Quantity Takeoff. And what it's really all about is, given that you have all these model elements sitting there in the model, can I just export them as a batch and let you get access to all the quantity values very quickly? Okay. You still need to go through and apply costs to the different quantities, but it gives you all the quantities very quickly. And let me show you how that works, because it's actually pretty straightforward. What I'm going to do is switch on over, and I am going to switch to... Oh, I'm actually going to go and open up the project file that you're going to be working with. So I'll open the assignment for starting point. It looks something like this. Okay. Again, I can construct an awful lot of schedules within Revit to try and quantify these different things. But if I actually wanted to get all the different data about the model here and bring it over where I can grab all the quantities quickly, what I can do is export it as a DWF file. And you might recognize that as being the same thing that we had you do for the first couple of assignments. DWF is just sort of a nice common file format for exchanging data that actually gives us the whole model. So I can say export it. I'll say data export of the building for class two. Export that away. And what it's doing is it's actually going to take each and every one of those 2,000 objects and write them on out. So every piece of wall, every window, every piece of roof, it's writing them all out into a common format that we can pick up somewhere else. Now what do we do with that stuff? We can go into the product called Autodesk Quantity Takeoff. And let me just kind of create a new project there. I'm going to call this the Class 2 project. I can choose what type of uh, unit system I want to use. The catalog is the issue of whether you have a work breakdown structure that you want to use. So you can do a CSI or unit format. It really is mostly involved in sort of the overall organization of the hierarchy of the different elements and how you get them organized. For now, I'm just going to say none because I want some quick answers. But over time, you'll start to develop a catalog for your company that actually organizes things the way you want the estimates stored and also lets you store some of the cost formulas for each of the different items as part of that catalog. But what I can do is open and import the building. Let me finish that. You can open several different files so I could bring in the architectural model, I can bring in the structural model, all the different pieces I want to bring in. Close it on up. And what it will do is present to me the same model of the building. This looks very much like it did over in Navisworks. It's very, very similar. There's a model tree. And I can choose specific things, like I can choose all the wall elements. Or I can choose specific types of walls. And for anything that I want to take off, if I just want to know all the EIFS walls, I can choose those and right click and say, take them off. And what it's going to do is go through the model and actually report to us that there are 86 objects, which resulted in 8133 square feet of one type of EIFS wall and 3996 square feet of the other type. So I can take things off piece at a time. Since you only have about four different elements you need to take off, that's kind of an easy way to kind of grab them. You can also go through and take off the entire model if you want to. And if you do that, it's going to go through and look at all of the 1,900 objects or so and kind of put them into this structure down here. So the first step is just using it, let it take off all the quantities. Okay, and that's actually pretty easy to do. Okay, so there were 1,200 objects in there. I'm off by you know, about half. 
where they are showing up right now is down here. I have all the doors and the windows and the railings and different items like that. Now, for every different type of element, you find there are different ways of estimating it. For example, walls, we tend to estimate based on square footages. So if I choose a wall type, and I choose the properties of that, I can sort of say that, yes, it is going to be an area-based calculation. And I can put in some cost metric that I want to use. I can get very detailed breaking it down by material and labor and all the subcomponents. Or I can just go ahead and put in a single cost. For example, if I want that to be $50 per square foot, I'd apply that there. And it doesn't look like it did much yet because it's sort of hiding the extra columns. Let me show another column so you can actually see what the effect of that is. I'll bring in that materials cost. And I have to squeeze that over. There we go. So it's figuring for those 8,000 square feet at $50 a square foot, it's $406,000 right there. Similarly, down here, I could just go ahead and just type in the value of 35. And it's kind of like a hybrid, somewhere between an Excel spreadsheet and a model database for pulling these things together. Now, in working in quantity takeoff, what it's really good at is just pulling the quantities out. That's what it really excels at. And for each of the different types of things, you get to decide, is that something that's based on square footage? Is it based on volume? Is it based on linear foot? For example, if I was doing railings and things like that, that's a good linear foot thing. Okay, So it's $100 per linear foot of rail. If I was doing doors and windows, I'd say, I don't really care about the square footage of doors. I'd say, that's a $500 door. And there's 100 of them on this floor, so I just multiply that together. That's an each item. So for every different item, you could just sort of say how it's quantified, put the cost in here, and it'll summarize that stuff. This data, in fact, even the uh, Revit data um, could be exported to Excel if you want to work out as a spreadsheet. You could also pull this data out and export it to Timberline or uh, Sage or some sort of like estimating system if you want to go ahead and take it there. But what it's all about is really just pulling data out of the model. And I wish I had more time to cover it, but we're kind of out of time for today. But for now, that's enough to get you started. For where you want to be for the assignment, it really is sufficient since you have a very small number of things to sort of quantify. You could just do it all in Revit and do it as schedules there. But if you want to play with quantity takeoff, that's just another way of pulling the information out. And if you do play in quantity takeoff, the final step for you would be there's actually a whole reporting feature where you can choose what items you want to include which columns you want to include, and it'll create a nicely formatted PDF that kind of summarizes the data that you chose to add up. Okay, So let's leave you there for today and let you go ahead and head off for today and get started on things. If you haven't yet, please go ahead and sign up for a group or find some partners. And when you do find some partners, please come add yourself to a group so you can kind of keep track of what's going on. But uh, feel free to jump on in and get started. And the big thing is, again, you should be spending a couple hours doing your preliminary work, kind of organizing, and then meeting as a group to kind of figure out how you're resolving things. But uh, see if you can get some of that done on the early side as opposed to waiting to the end of next week, because towards Thursday and Friday, everyone's going to be so busy finishing up projects, no one will ever have time to meet. So you don't want to be fighting with that on Saturday night. OK, great.